Hello and welcome back to another Tasty tutorial. Yes, today I'm showing you how to create these abstract shapes in a matter of minutes with shading and we'll also put a bit of light just to create a nicer effect. Make sure you like the video, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot and I can produce more free resources for you guys. In any case, let's get into the video. Okay, so I've opened Blender 3.1 and we can already start working on our little abstract shape. So I'm going to press C and then just arrange the camera and light to disappear. So delete X delete. And I'll just keep the cube. I'm just going to press control three, which is a shortcut to put a subdivision modifier of three. And in my modifier tab, I'll just apply it. Control A to reset the scale just in case. And now let's go into sculpt mode. So you've got object mode down sculpt mode. Now, before we start doing anything, I want to make a couple of adjustments. So I'm going to press here in dynamic topology toggle. So we're going to turn on dynamic topology and instead of relative detail, I'll set it to constant detail with a resolution of 30. So what constant and relative detail means, constant detail, the detailing of your brushes is going to be the same all of the time. Relative detail means that the closer you are, the more resolution you will be adding. In this case, we're just going to be using the constant one. You can find a bunch of nice resources on the matter. Let's grab the clay strips brush and let's get into our little sphere over here. If you press F, you can actually scale the size of the brush. Click on our little ball over here. And if you want to, you can also go under this overlays menu and click wireframe. So you can see how much of detail and how much of geometry you're actually adding to your object. Now, why are we doing this? We're adding this detail so we can have a nicer snake hook effect later, which can be used for any, anything from waves to clouds. So we'll go through all of these applications later. Okay, when I feel I have enough detail, I'm going to jump down to the snake hook. Now, the way the snake hook works is sort of almost like a grab brush, but it extends the object. And you can see, like you can make these tentacly things. I'm pulling it very slow, so it has time to produce other geometries. Essentially, this is the brush. If you pull it too fast or if you start doing this, then it starts to like distort. So it got me thinking one day and I was like, OK, but if you click on it and drag it in a very small circle around and around, you start getting these super nice and tasty shapes that are kind of almost reminiscent of the Dragon Ball clouds. If any of you ever saw the cartoon or played it. So basically you get these swirls all around your object that are super, super interesting. And this is essentially what I'm doing. I'm just turning around, left clicking, and then making super small circles so I can get these nice swirly lines. You can also change the direction, go in it. As you can see, the, the fall off is the yellow circle around. So basically the brush grabs everything that it's around and you want to evade these super sharp edges because usually they will produce some sort of problem with your shading. You can also extend them out, so drag them and then start pulling them in. And you can see there's a lot of applications for this sort of stuff. You can make anything from waves to swirly clowns, roots, and I'll show you how I would then move on with one of these shapes. We can, let's say, use this as a cloud, okay? So what I'm gonna do is jump back into my object mode, shade smooth, and I'll turn off the overlays so I can see a bit better what's happening. You have this nice, like, abstract shape, swirly shape. I don't know, I just find them interesting. And I'm gonna set up a quick thing for visualization. So under my render properties, I'm gonna choose cycles, and the device is gonna be GPU, by default, it puts to a thousand samples. That's way too much for viewport. It's just going to be 35. And since I'm going to be working also with some volumetrics, I'm going to set the volume to 20 like that. I don't think any other things are needed here. Maybe we can turn off the background or something so we can keep this grayish thing on. So I'm just going to click transparent. And now I'm going to go under my world settings. And here I'm just going to pull the strength down. So if I press shift Z, for rendered view, nothing is happening. Of course, let me add a light and I'm gonna put this area in, pull it out on the X, R, Y, 90 degrees. 
something like this. I'm going to increase the power to, I don't know, 250 and make this instead of a square, a disc and increase the size, which is going to give me this like rim sort of light. Now I'm jumping between views. So if I also want to just have this into my front view position, I just press one on the numpad. I can then select both of these objects, R, Z, and then rotate them on the Z axis like that. I'm just going to keep it like this. Let's shade this little cloud right here. So I'm going to pull the screen apart, make it into two halves, choose the shader editor. And in the shader editor, I'll just press N to hide the sidebar. I'm going to delete the principled BSDF and I'm going to put in a principled volume. So shift A, search for principled volume. The volume socket, put it into the volume socket as well. And here we go. We have this super interesting patch of of cloud since we have set up the volume samples to be high the reproduction of our color is going to be better if you keep these at zero your clouds are usually going to be very great in our case it's not an issue because we have a very strong light in the back but in some cases you might have issues with samples being too low so i usually just put them around 20. it may be a bit too much but it bears good results. You can then play around with density. So when we start putting in more density, you get these super interesting effects. If you start adding color all over the place, you start getting these, again, these Dragon Ball reminiscent little clouds. This is how we made this little cloud. Let's try making a splash of water, for example, a stylized splash of water. So I'm gonna delete this bad boy. And I can also delete the area light. So let me try and set up an HDRI right now. This is like global illumination, just for the sake of it. I'm gonna go under the color, environment texture, press open. This is gonna open the search file and search the folder where you have your HDRI. If you don't know how to set up your HDRI, I have a video on that. And you can also find plenty of videos that tell you how to set up an HDRI. It's very simple. It's just setting up a texture which is essentially a global illumination texture, and that's it. I'm gonna bring this screen a bit more to the right, add a cube. Mm, I'm gonna scale it down on the Z, control A to reset the scale, then add with control three, a subdivision modifier, control A to apply it. So I have, a, let's say a bigger number of subdivisions, and I go back into my sculpt mode, dynamic topology, like we said before, constant detail at 30 resolution. Let's turn on wireframe just to see what was happening. Let's use the clay strips and just click on the surface to add these details in. So we have a nice meshy detail object. Okay, now let's say we take the snake hook again. So I'm just grabbing the front, making a circle. So the larger the circle you make, the more pronounced this snake hook thing is going to be. The smaller the circle, the less pronounced. So it has like this accumulative effect. And again, I can pull it in front, I can pull it to the back like this, create a couple of these. You can then also just move them with the grab brush if you feel like most of them are just going a bit towards let's say in this case they're going a bit towards the left you can then move them here a bit there a bit just make sure you try as many times as possible just to get the feel of how the the snake brush works and again like i said you can then just grab the what is it the grab brush and then start moving them around maybe position them as you like something like that perfectly fine so let's exit back into object mode like that let's turn off the wireframe in our overlays w to shade smooth so we see what's happening right here so now i'm going to show you another very useful trick okay let me turn the illumination let's put it to one something like this so we have this nice collection of highlights and shadows and now i'm going to show you a very useful trick for this stuff as well so let's go under vertex paint. So object mode vertex paint and go to paint and then dirty vertex colors. 
So what this does, if we press Z, basically it finds all of the edges that are different in height, I think, I presume, and it colors the vertex in white and the deeper ones in black. I think Grant Abbott used this to create like crease um, maps or something like that. And it's exactly what we're also going to be doing here. So I created this vertex pane thing. So I'm going to go back into my object mode and I'm going to add a shader. And for this shader, I'll go shift A, add vertex color. And this node carries the information that we have painted over this object. So let me go into viewport shading, add a color ramp like that. Connect the color to the base color of the principal BSDF. Well, nothing marginal happens. But when I connect the color to the color ramp, now we start getting the control over all of these bits and pieces. So now you can see where I'm going. Essentially, you can just do the black as a deeper type of blue or this type of blue, and you can make the white slightly more to the blue, something like that. Let's go into rendered view. Boom. You can work on the definition of some things. Of course, the more detail you use, the more defined it's going to be. You can lower down the roughness, or maybe we can keep the roughness at about 0 to 95. Subsurface is also an interesting thing to add to these things. 0 0.2, but we can also add more of this bluish hue. You can also turn it down, something like this just dial it in so it has this nice propagation. So we can connect the vertex color to the subsurface and the distribution of the subsurface is going to be just as you had it before in the vertex paint. And yeah, this basically you can make anything from this. You can make roots, you can make waves, you can make clouds, anything that has this super fantasy stylized type of vibe, you can actually use this as a super, super, super interesting starting point. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Super quick, super dirty. Hopefully you've learned something new. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And I will see you in the next one.